The Rubik's Cube is one of the most iconic puzzles in the world. With over 43 quintillion unique combinations, many people find it impossible just after a few minutes of trying. However, solving this puzzle is far from impossible. In fact, there are a variety of ways to solve it ranging from intuitive methods to extremely memory-based algorithmic solutions. Everyone who solves the cube does it in their own unique way. In this video, we asked five different cubers of varying skill levels to explain to us how they solve the cube. These cubers range from a complete beginner who only recently learned how to solve the cube, averaging around two minutes, to the number one ranked cuber in the entire world whose average solve time is under six seconds. We gave each of these cubers the same scramble, this one right here. There's no particular significance to the scramble, it's actually pretty random. This is what realistically a cuber would see when they practice their solves. Let's see how these five different cubers approach it. Okay, so my name is Snow Patchwell. I have been doing cubing for uh, a few months. I don't do it every day. Just whenever I have time, I'll practice a little bit. My best time from it two, two minutes, two and a half minutes. <laughs> this, this is my best. This is definitely my best. And if I make a mistake, it's going to be over five. But I'm still, I, I'm very proud of myself. <laughs> Snow is a friend of Phil's who was kind enough to be in this video. She learned how to solve a cube from our very own tutorial, which is taught by Phil. He teaches a very basic form of the beginner's method where the only moves you actually need to learn are the R U R prime U prime and L prime U prime L U triggers or the formula, as you'll hear Snow call it. So I'm going to solve the, uh, the cross, so the white cross first. In order to do that, I will move the white, move them around the yellow. So once I move all the white here, I will find the color on the other side. Orange goes with orange and turn it twice. And then now uh, I found a white cross. And now I have to find the, uh, the corner white. This side is green, here is red. I move it to green red. So I'm just doing this. Now the white is on the bottom. And now I, I move all the white to one side. This step, I have to solve the second layer. I have to match the orange color on this side. If it's on the left, I have to move the grain away, it is formula, solve the left hand, do the formula on the left hand. And then I move it to the left side and do this. Did I do it right? Oh yes, I switch it here. The same formula. Now I solve the second layer. For the top layer, I have to find the yellow cross. I just remember this is a pattern. If I see a pattern like this, I have to do a fat turn and uh, do a formula and turn them back. Once I found the cross, I have to find the corner, which is green, red, yellow. So these two corners actually matches the three sides of the color, which means the other corner, it just, uh, it's not matching. Uh, right hand, one, two, three times and turn it to the right. And now I turn it upside down and trying to put all the, uh, the yellow color to the bottom. So I just use the same formula. Did I do that right? Okay, here. I don't want to mess it up. Okay, here. Okay, there's one side has all the, the solid color, same color, I move it to orange and I turn it upside down. So if the pattern is uh, counterclockwise, I should start the formula with right hand. I have to move right hand, I think it's one time, and then left hand one time, and then five times. And here, one, two, three, four, Five. And then I solved it. That was perfect. <laughs> All that right. Was awesome. Thank you. <laughs> What's up guys, my name is Michelle Carre. I am a YouTuber and I just started cubing a few weeks ago. Michelle recently challenged herself to get a sub one minute time in less than a week. Ah, yes! I got it! Which of course she did. I learned the beginner method and I also came up with a lot of fun names for all of the moves because apparently there aren't names for the algorithms which I think is insane. We wanted to include another beginner in this video who made it a goal to become fast quickly as opposed to a person whose goal was to simply know how to solve the cube. So let's see how she handles the scramble. 
when I'm gonna be explaining my method for solving this today. It might not be the fastest, but it's going to be the funnest. At my level, I only look out a couple moves, so I'm noticing you know, there's this blue piece here. There is a orange piece that has a hit the target opportunity, but uh, I'll start with the blue. So first things first, I'm gonna crank it over to the blue side, swing it up, hit the target, which is a term that JPerm taught me. And I have another opportunity here with the orange to do the same. Where is the green edge piece? Okay, here it is at the bottom. Hit the target again. Then we're gonna flip it over to the other side. Oh, it actually seems that all the white pieces are on the bottom, so they just need to be pulled out and put in the right places. So I'm gonna sexy move them out, yeah. So apparently that's the technical term. Sexy move again. Okay, now we have our orange and green. Bring this over here. Uh, left hand sexy move that one in and then right hand sexy move this one in. Yay, first layer's fun. First layer's like chilling, you know what I'm saying? Now when we get to the second layer, second layer is slightly more annoying, but there's like, there's some flipping and skipping, you know what I'm saying? Because this is where we get into the flippity skippity. So I'm gonna show y'all what that is. So I do have this orange and blue piece that needs to be fit here. So we, we're gonna flippity skippity, flip, uh, skip it away, sexy move, turn, Sexy move, left hand, bam, flippity skippity. You know what I'm saying? Second layer gives me rom-com vibes. It's not gonna make any sense, um, but it does. What I see here with this first move, when you push it away, it's like, we can't be together. But then, you know, you do a couple sexy moves, bam, we can be together. <laughs> okay, that's the second layer. Oh, oh my God. You know, with the Michelle method, you really have to be prepared for anything. Now we're gonna get into the third layer. And the third layer begins with one of my favorite moves, which I like to call the break dance. We're gonna create this little like inverse upside down L here. We're going to take the front layer and the, the one behind the front layer, break dance. I call it break dance because it reminds me of someone spinning on their head when they break dance. And then sexy move, which, you know, think about it, break dancing could be sexy, depends on who's doing it. So now we try to put the edge pieces in their proper positions. The red and the blue are backwards, but the orange piece, edge piece, and the green edge piece are in the exact position they need to be. So now it's time to do the crazy, which is this move. Um, it was that. Now we're coming to one of my favorite moves. It's time for the dance party. So. With dance party, you're gonna envision this in your head. Feel free to add music here, Jesse. You're gonna go, hey, oh, hey, yeah, what, whoa, yeah. And you're gonna do that on the cube. If you're watching this and you're new to cubing and that made no sense, okay, now watch me do it on the cube. We're gonna go, hey, up, hey, up, back over here, down, back over here, down, bam. Everything's exactly where it needs to be. Now it's time for the finisher. Depending on the position of, of these final corner pieces, we're either going to sexy or inverse sexy. So this first piece here, the yellow is facing us, meaning we're gonna do two inverse sexies. And now it is correct. Now don't be alarmed because I have been in the past. When you get here, it may look like you've messed up everything else on the cube, just don't move it. Don't move it. Don't make the mistake that I've made many times. As long as JPerm told me you have these four pieces here, then you most likely haven't messed up. Spin the bottom. Okay, we have a yellow facing us again. Again, trust the process, don't freak out. Two inverse sexies, turn it again. Two inverse sexies. Bam. Soft, you're a cubing expert. And there you have it. That is the Michelle method to solving today's scramble. Yeah, my name is Alan Trochanov. Super happy to be here at the Cubicle. Alan is the founding chair of the Master of Fine Arts Products of Design program at the School of Visual Arts in New York City. He's also a friend of Phil's. I design products. I'm actually an educator at this point. I have lots of different hobbies and cubing has been a really great one. I've been uh, cubing for three years, a little bit more. I use CFOP. I average somewhere probably, you know, under 25 seconds. All right, well, I solve on white primarily. I can solve on um, yellow, but I'll do white for this. So here I can see red on the bottom, green here, uh, orange, which would be opposite to red if I did a D, and blue, which would go in nicely. So I would move D over here, orange down, um, blue down, and then uh, green down and fix the cross. Here I would see uh, the red and green pair. 
move that up here, down, and solve it in the back. Uh, there, I'm uh, tracking over here the blue and red. Move that over here and also um, solve that in the back. Oh, made a mistake there. Uh, sorry. So this is gonna be blue and orange. Here, uh, I would probably do a fat D here and move this uh, and solve the blue and red over here. And then um, solve the orange and green and insert like this. Uh, I wish I knew this OLL, um, but I don't. So to look OLL. Um, and well, a skip. So I don't know if we can count that. Hello everyone, my name is Milan, but you might know me as Cupid. I'm a YouTuber from Belgium, 24 years old, and I've been cubing for eight years. Today I'm gonna show you how I solve the Rubik's Cube. I use CFOP. Yeah, let's just get straight to it. This is the first time I see the scramble. Now, I, I'm color neutral, which means that I can start the scramble from any color. But just looking at it, uh, we see this pair right here, which is ideal for white cross. So I'm gonna solve the white cross. This is basically like how I choose a cross color. We have a pretty easy solution as well. So we see this piece is solved. We have green here, orange here, and blue here. So what we can do is just solve the orange and blue piece relative to each other. And then we can move this pair out of the way so we can solve the green piece. Now we have green, orange, blue solved. Just align the cross and solve the last piece again. Sorry, my cat is making a lot of noise. But anyways, uh, we preserved this pair, so we just need to solve it into the bag. Now, uh, whilst I was solving that one, I, I noticed this pair next. So we have this corner, this edge, make it into a three mover and solve it on the right side. Now, I have solved both pairs on the right side, which isn't ideal, but I would do this in a solve. And the next thing that isn't ideal is that I just see this pair right here. I might actually do these two in the back, which would be better, but uh, th this is so obvious that I'm just gonna do it uh, this way. Very straightforward. Uh, now, this is the worst case that you can get. I have to solve the back left pair, and it's a really bad case. And I'm gonna end up with a dot case if I don't do something uh, special, like solving this pair with a sledge. Um, OLL, pretty straightforward. And then a really nice U-perm that I messed up. Okay, let's try that again, just like that. <laughs> Thanks for watching, yeah. I average below six seconds, and some people consider me the fastest in the world. By some people, he means the WCA. Timon currently holds the 3x3 world record average of 5.09 seconds. And if you're unaware, the average world record is generally given more weight by cubers, as singles are usually very lucky. Timon is known for his crazy look ahead and very efficient solutions, utilizing his vast knowledge of the cube to help him save moves and solve F2L pairs in very unique ways, like through pseudo slotting. 5 average, not bad. Right, so first thing I would see is this block and this connected edge. So I would check white because this is a free pair on white and then probably blue and orange as well. So starting with blue, I don't really see anything good. On white, I see a couple of ways to preserve the pair. And then on orange, I don't think there's anything good either. So I would, by default, start planning a white cross here. I think the best way to solve this cross and preserve the pair would be move this edge out of the way, solve this edge, and then you get to solve this one. And then before solving the green edge, you have to move the pair out of the way. You can do that in two different ways, well, three different ways, and all of them affect the next pairs differently. But the easiest way, and probably the only one I would usually consider, is to just do a U-move, because the easiest for finger tricks. Then you solve the cross, and now you can go straight into doing this. But before you do that, you can already see the next two pairs. So the way I see this is when I insert this pair to the back, this corner is going to flip this way. So the white sticker is going to be here, and also the corner is going to move to here. After that, I can rotate, solve these two pieces into here, which will put this edge here with red in front, and this corner, uh, I believe, is going to be here with the white sticker facing here. So then you can cancel some moves. So yeah, you do that, insert it, 
solve this pair and like I said the corner goes in here so then you can cancel the last move of this pair to set this up into a free mover solve it and then you have this pair now, this is hard to explain but from here I can already see what OLL I'm going to get just from having done a lot of solves so I'll go straight into that and then I'm left with a Jeeper. Oh man, what an adventure. Yeah, yeah, it was really interesting to see how these five different people all had different priorities and styles, especially for the beginners. Uh, both Snow and Michelle did a great job. Not only did they learn how to solve the cube, but they also performed solving the cube in front of a camera, which is uh, pretty nerve wracking if you don't have much experience. Uh, probably tougher for Snow because Michelle is very experienced in video production. Shout out to uh, everyone who was in this video. Thank you guys so much if you're watching. Yeah, it was awesome to get some really cool people in this video and uh, definitely let us know kind of what you thought of this format and if you'd want us to do this again with uh, different cubers, like some ideas we had was doing it with smaller uh, gaps between the times. Like this video was kind of made with everyone in mind. We wanted to show some beginners for non-cubers and also some advanced cubers for the cubers watching. But let us know if you'd want to do, if you'd want to see this kind of thing with different methods, different puzzles. Yeah, just let us know your thoughts. And we also posted the scramble in the description if you want to give the scramble a try and see what kind of times you get uh, yeah, definitely let us know maybe like what Cuber you're closest to. Yeah, overall that was a really good experience. Uh, I was here to watch some of the people filming and it was just really fun and creative and uh, we're glad we did this. Yeah, it was fun. So yeah, let us know what you think. And thanks for watching.